Hello, my name is Mark Benson. I'm so happy to be here. We have such a great lineup of speakers here today, and I'm honored to be here with you. Standing here at the Computer History Museum is a beautiful reminder of all the ways that technology has really changed the world. But for every product that has changed the world, there are many thousands that didn't, that aren't here. Products that failed or perhaps didn't reach their full potential. And there are so many reasons why a product can fail. Perhaps the feature mix wasn't quite right, or perhaps the cost didn't hit the right cost point, or perhaps the, the market wasn't ready, or the timing wasn't right. There are so many reasons that products can fail. And today, as we're talking about all the exciting ways that we can leverage technology to solve real problems in the world, I want to make sure that we remember that there's something that we may not be talking enough about, which is empathy. So I want to talk today about empathy. Now, we're in, um, in a tech conference talking about feelings. I hope that's OK to, to do that for a bit. Um, but if, if the user isn't in the room when we're talking about it, what, you know, what are we doing? So what is empathy? Empathy is really that ability to understand and take on the perspective of another person or to see something from someone else's point of view. And I think we can all probably know when we've just had an interaction where someone has been treating us empathetically. We usually feel valued. We feel heard. Uh, we feel that our, our time is worthwhile. And by contrast, sometimes a sympathetic interaction might leave us feel like it was a cold transaction or we might have felt pitied or that our time actually wasn't valuable. If I have a friend that comes over to my house and they talk to me about things that are going on in their life that are very hard for them, a sympathetic response you know, really might be, well, at least you have a great job and you have friends. But an empathetic response makes such a big difference to say, wow, thank you for telling me that. That's really hard. I can only imagine what you're going through. Tell me more. It really does uh, make a difference. But here's the thing about empathy, is that in order to connect with another person empathetically, we have to connect with something deep inside ourselves that knows that same feeling or can imagine what that feeling is like. It's really, it's not just understanding and listening. It also requires introspection. Now, the same is true with product design. If we think about empathetic product design, if we're going to really connect the products we make with the users that they're for, we have to not only understand what is going on in the context, what they're doing, what the business problem may be, but we have to connect that with something deep inside that knows what that's like. Or if we don't know, and we don't have that empathy, we need to find it. We need to find out what is the problem that the user is facing, what is that context uh, that they have. And it's so easy to miss the mark in this. Uh, we may be distracted. We may have a new, exciting technology that we're very excited to, uh, to work on and implement, but it's not, we're not remembering what the user uh, really cares about. It's possible that there's misalignment in the organization. You may have a single product designer that has a great empathetic product idea, but if the engineering team and the developers don't also understand what's going on with the user, that project is in jeopardy of perhaps not missing the mark. And I'm sure many of you have seen all kinds of cartoons or illustrations where a product idea gets transferred through the game of telephone, and at the end, the product doesn't meet at all what the user needs. It's so important to have alignment within the team about what's going on with the user and to have that empathy. And for products that are, have a life um, use and are used far beyond when they're first installed, there's also an empathetic follow-through that's required. Or if you're uh, building a machine that needs to learn and adapt over time. It needs to live and to breathe and understand how that context may change. And in the world of the smart home, being able to adapt to what users need, it's, it's changing very, very quickly. At SmartThings, we have empathy as a core expectation of our leaders. So we practice empathy every day in how we manage internally 
at SmartThings, and it turns out to be a great leadership style as well. We also, for all new employees that work at SmartThings, we give them smart home kits and we expect them to use them. We want our employees to not only just hear about what it's like to have a smart home, but actually to feel it and to know it and know what that's like. And that's true for executives, for product managers, for legal, finance, or people who manage our offices. Everybody in the company knows what it's like and to feel what it's like to have a smart home. And it makes all the difference. So if our job in the smart home is to really get in the mind of the user and to have that kind of empathy that I'm talking about, over the last two and a half years, what users care about has really changed. In the last two and a half years, people are reimagining their homes. Reimagining their homes, uh, perhaps as they originally intended, as places of rest and relaxation and safety, but also more recently as places of work and exercise. We're spending a lot more time in our homes and we're thinking about how we can improve our homes. You may have seen statistics about remodeling and people who are uh, doing improvement jobs in their homes. It's been going through the roof over the last two and a half years. But also as people have been doing that, the level of interest in the smart home has really risen significantly. Today, 80% of American homes now have at least one smart device in them. That's a, that's a massive number. Now with that, the demographics have also been shifting. We're seeing, as this has grown, a higher interest from women. We're seeing a lower average household income, an increased um, interest from renters, and also diversity metrics that are approaching that of the general population. And within those users, 74% of them started their journey with just a single device. So if we think about a, a really sophisticated smart home, almost nobody starts that way. Very few people start with a master plan of the dozens or hundred devices that they might put in their home. They start with one device. And it's lights, locks, doorbells, thermostats, cameras. They start with one, then they get two, then they get four, and pretty soon interoperability between those devices becomes a significant concern. But perhaps the most astonishing statistic of all is that 50% of smart device owners started their journey in just the last three years. So just the last three years, that's essentially the start of the pandemic that that has happened. So 50% of smart device users have really started that journey just very recently. So this is really exciting growth in the space, but it's really not all roses. There are significant challenges. If you've set up a smart home, there can be times that it's not as easy as you might think. Setting up a smart device can be challenging. Understanding how it interoperates or doesn't interoperate with other devices in your home is hard to understand. And for many, maintaining a smart home, a growing smart home, and solving problems over time or fixing issues that happen is new territory. And I'm sorry if this is news for you, but what consumers care about is not the technology itself. They care about what it can do for them. They care about why it matters in their lives. Users want things like peace of mind. They want to know that the house is locked and that the garage door is closed when they leave. They want their home to be convenient. They want to be able to set the thermostat from the couch. Uh, they want savings. They want to turn the lights off when no one's in the room. And they want to be entertained. They want to set the mood just right when they have a party at their house or when they're, they're watching a movie. But one of the biggest barriers to mass market adoption of the smart home is complexity. It's the, it's the boring stuff. It's the basic stuff. It's the first step. It's the first step of setting up your first device. It's understanding interoperability, and it's maintaining that home over time. This is one, the biggest barrier to mass adoption. So what I want to share with you next is three ways that in the smart home space that empathetic innovation 
is happening. And the first one is with in a new industry standard called Matter. Some of you have heard about this, but uh, Matter is a smart home standard. SmartThings is proud to be a founding member of the Connectivity Standards Alliance, which is responsible for forming Matter, which is comprised of hundreds of companies that are interested in making smart home devices more interoperable. Uh, Matter will be launching this year and we'll start seeing products come into the market late this year and early next year. Matter devices are compatible by design. If you think about as a consumer, you go to the store, you buy a device, is that gonna work with devices I already have? Matter devices are compatible by design, which means if you buy a Matter device, you can have high confidence that that will work with all of your other devices that you have in your home. This leads to lower returns for retailers, it leads to less frustration for consumers, and it leads to increased freedom of choice for users, which is great. Matter was also catalyzed by user demand, so the industry really led. Sometimes you need to innovate with a, the product experience itself, and sometimes the entire industry needs to come together to raise the level of interoperability, and that's what's happening with Matter. And all of this enables a higher level of innovation uh, for brands that are creating devices that uh, need to work in the smart home. They can spend less of their time worrying about the setup and how, uh, which ecosystems that device works with, and they can instead focus their energy on innovative new features that really matter to the user. So it changes where competition happens, it changes where differentiated features happen because the sound interoperability layer is there. So that's the second one I want to uh, tell you about, which is empathetic product design. Now, empathetic product design, I, I mentioned before what consumers want with uh, peace of mind. Well, if the product isn't resilient or trust, trusting or operates gracefully when the internet connection is down, that doesn't really bring very much peace of mind. The product needs to be convenient. It needs to be easy to use. For anyone who's designed a product, it is extremely easy to design a complicated product. <laughs> and it's really complicated, really complicated to design something that's easy, easy to understand, natural, something that just speaks for itself. That's what users want. They want ease of use and convenience. Savings, if the device is not able to be customized or tailored or adapt and learn to the behavior within a home, you're not going to achieve the same level of savings or have it be available to as wide of an audience if it were otherwise. And entertainment, I talked about that before. Uh, with interoperability between devices and personalization, uh, that's critical. SmartThings recently just announced a new expanded partnership with Philips Hue so that Galaxy devices can interoperate with Philips Hue to create immersive music and lighting experiences in the home, all from your Galaxy device. Our users love this. Last year, SmartThings introduced a new uh, product. It's a new um, technology that's called SmartThings Edge. And SmartThings Edge is a hub architecture that runs locally in the home that allows device interactions and automations to be able to be run locally in the home, regardless of whether there's an internet connection or not. This leads to higher reliability, higher uh, responsiveness where um, interactions are quick with low latency when it's right in the home. And also the personalization and customization that users have with their SmartThings system can run locally for them right in the home, nearest to where they are. Samsung last year also announced what you see in the picture here, which is a JetBot AI Plus robot vacuum cleaner. This robot vacuum cleaner has AI built in and is customizable. It adapts, it learns, and it, um, and it cleans your home. Now, this product has market-leading object detection, recognition algorithms that are built into it where it can avoid certain objects in the house or identify even breakable objects or pets and navigate around it. It also has autonomous operations, so it can, uh, it can do its thing on its own uh, without manual supervision. And it also can 
have personalized cleaning schedules so it can adapt and clean um, at the time that's right and be personalized to the, to, the, to the home that it's in. Now, SmartThings also released around that same time the SmartThings Pet Care Service. And the SmartThings Pet Care Service lets you check in on your beloved pet while you're away or trigger another device to feed, to feed your pet that's there. Uh, this, is, this is something when we talk about empathy, this is, these are things that users really care about. You know, they don't wake up dreaming about how to onboard an IoT device or what interoperability might be there or what technology is in there. They care about their pets. They care about their cats. I don't personally like cats. I, we have dogs, but <laughs> they care about their pets. Um, these are things that users care about. And perhaps, you know, um, not the most sexy statement I will say, but this device also has pet excrement detection. So it can look for pet messes, identify them, avoid them, and avoid any sort of unnecessary spreading or secondary contamination. And it's funny when you think about it, but if we're talking about empathy, this matters. This really matters when you use a device like this. These are not the kind of user needs that you can understand passively, things that you can just look at the market data and say, oh, I think we should design a product that generally fits this market. If you don't really get into the mind of the user and what is happening in the home in the context of when a device like this is used, you may miss these sorts of things. So with a solid foundation of interoperability and great product design, this enables really what users truly care about, which is empathetic experiences. So empathetic experiences in the home, there are all kinds of things that happen. People are coming and going, they're studying, cooking, eating, sleeping, being entertained, having guests over, reading, having quiet time. All of these things happen in a home. And within the smart home, sometimes users want things that just do things for them. A robot vacuum cleaner that cleans the floor. That's great. Sometimes it's assisting, having something in the kitchen that can help with cooking, identifying new recipes, ordering groceries. Or monitoring, remotely monitoring things like safety and security around the home or with pets, entertaining, or sometimes just disappearing. Sometimes disappearing so that users can just focus on the things they care about, connecting with their kids, with friends that come over, or just having some me time. Smart Things is 10 years old this year. This is the 10-year anniversary of Smart Things. It started as a Kickstarter campaign and was acquired by Samsung eight years ago. And since that time, Smart Things has put together empathetic experiences that really matter to users. We've done Smart Things cooking. There's Smart Things energy, Smart Things home care, Smart Things clothing care, which you can see you can schedule uh, when the laundry will be done, for example, air care and also pet care and more. These are things that have happened just in the last few years. Empathy in product design doesn't, it doesn't just happen. It requires leadership. If your organization wants different outcomes and to be thinking about empathy differently, it requires leadership. It requires you to step up and to talk about it, to put the customer in the room with every conversation that you're in to think about not just what is the technology in front of us or what's the business conditions we're dealing with, but what is the user facing? What is the business problem that needs to be solved? That needs to be in every conversation. It requires leadership. It requires alignment. I mentioned this before with up, down, and across the organization. If there's uh, parts of the organization that just don't understand what the user is needing, it can lead to misalignment. Having partners that also think empathetically is super important and having technology that you can encode that empathy into the product and be able to have the product live and breathe and adapt is super important. At SmartThings, we have empathy, as I mentioned, as a, as a core leadership principle that we expect of all of our leaders. And if they're not good at empathy, you can get better at empathy. And if you really just can't do it, there are mechanisms of empathy you can put in place that force you to get insight from people that you're leading. We also encode empathy in our product management processes. Um, I mentioned alignment with giving smart home setups to every 
new employee that we have. We've instrumented empathy in how we orchestrate our community of developers within the ecosystem so that we can tap into the knowledge that they have about what's going on with users. We have empathy encoded in our processes, how we think about what consumers are saying through voice of customer data, through operational metrics. And, and we're also contributing to industry or uh, to uh, university research on empathetic AI. So there will be some work that will be published soon by Dr. Scott Nelson and Dr. Anant Mishra from the University of Minnesota in the coming months on empathetic AI. And SmartThings is, is honored to be part of that, uh, that research. As we think about empathy, I really believe that as we look forward over the next 10 years, empathy and empathetic product design will really separate the good companies from the great companies. And the products that we will be talking about, the ones that really change the world, will be ones that had really empathy at their core. Thank you so much.